大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Wang. You know, a lot of people have been asking me what I think about this whole Huawei situation. There are all kinds of rumors and opinions out there. I did a bunch of research on the subject, and I think a lot of you are going to be surprised by what I found. Like every large company, Huawei has had various random small controversies over the decades, but in recent years, something explosive has happened. Some people in the West view it as the scariest company ever. But why? Way back in 2007, George H. Bush's administration warned against Huawei participating in buying 3Com because they have shadowy ties to the Chinese Army and Intelligence Services. No evidence was given beyond that vague and frankly bizarre accusation. Huawei is connected to the Army? You know which companies have been directly connected to the US military and intelligence services? Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, AT&T, Verizon, and many, many more. That's because the military has to get their equipment from somewhere. What are they gonna do? Get in the business of creating smartphones? Of course not. In 2009, officials in the UK warned that using Huawei would open the network for targeted attacks. Again, no evidence was presented, just a vague, scary sounding warning. The world mostly forgot about these concerns until suddenly in 2012, Australia banned Huawei from their national broadband network, citing security concerns and then claimed that Huawei was involved in cyber warfare. You know, hacking. Meanwhile, the head of Huawei's Australian board, Alexander Downer, said, the whole concept of Huawei being involved in cyber warfare is based on the company being Chinese, and said the whole thing was ridiculous. Then, the US House of Representatives warned of potential state influence threats from Huawei and advised business owners not to use Huawei products following a 60-page conclusion from an 11-month investigation. I read it, and let me tell you, by and large, it's a document made by people who just seem confused about how corporate relationships work with governments in a country that isn't Western-styled. I wanted to go through this thing with you and point out all the stupid in it, but honestly, it's just too long for that. Their conclusion overall came from Huawei not providing them with sufficient information about the role of the Chinese government offices in their company. And before you start thinking that sounds fishy, take a moment to understand the culture of the country we're talking about, China. China's a socialist country which places the power of the government over corporations, as opposed to capitalist countries which inevitably place corporations over the government. So in this country, it's highly inappropriate and strange to go to the government and demand to see all their paperwork. It just doesn't work that way. And some of the answers they were unwilling to provide, like how specifically they communicate with the government, might actually be illegal to disclose. But apparently a corporation not having power over the government is somehow evidence that it's dangerous. In 2012, the White House finished an 18-month review of Huawei and concluded there was, quote, no evidence of spying by Huawei. So anyway, by 2013, a Japanese company bought Sprint, a major US telecom, and promised not to use Huawei technologies. Note that Japan had no problems doing major business in America. But as for China, former CIA head Michael Hayden called Huawei a national security threat to the US and Australia. He then went on to slam Edward Snowden for leaking government documents proving that the US was spying all along. He also said, and this is important, quote, I reviewed Huawei's briefing paper, but God did not make enough slides on Huawei to convince me that having them involved in our critical communications infrastructure was going to be okay. Did you catch that? So far, not only has no one anywhere offered any evidence that Huawei is spying or has ever spied, but now Michael Hayden is putting the burden of proof on Huawei Prove to us you're not a criminal organization. And on top of that, he admits no matter what they say, he will never accept their innocence. But you know what? I'm sure that if Huawei actually released their source code to all their software, security analysts would find tons of crazy things in it. Hacks, backdoors, and espionage functions. It would be a total risk to national security. Wait, hang on. What does that say? In 2015, the UK's Intelligence and Security Committee finished reviewing all of Huawei's source code and concluded, quote, there is no evidence that Huawei has presented any risk to the UK's national security. So now the UK is clearly giving evidence that they are not a threat. Okay, okay, but maybe the phones themselves are the risky things. Maybe it's Huawei's lack of security on their phones. Yeah. 
In 2016, Huawei was ranked, quote, remarkably well when it comes to security patching, with 77% of phones running the most recent patches versus only 15% for Samsung. Their code has nothing malicious and their phones are remarkably secure. So what's the problem? In 2017, WikiLeaks revealed the US had discovered security flaws in an extremely long list of products. Rather than disclose the flaws, they intentionally hid them to exploit them for spying. How extensively is the US spying on Americans in other countries, you ask? Don't worry, they are only spying on people who have automatic driving cars or modern cars with vehicle control systems. Oh, or smart TVs or Android phones or Sony PSPs or people who use Windows, OS X, Linux, Solaris, iPhones, iPads, Microsoft Office, DVD drives or Google. Oh, also people who use Telegram, WhatsApp, Signal, Weibo, or most antivirus software like Malwarebytes or McAfee or any of uh, hundreds of other brands. So if you use any of these things or you bought any of these things in the US, America is likely spying on you. But I'm sure that's just a small fraction of people. I mean, who uses cell phones, computers, the internet, and cars? So if the US government intentionally finds exploits and software to spy on people, which we 100% know that they do, could it be the very fact that Huawei's code for the most part doesn't have these issues is why the US doesn't want their software being run? Also, this next part becomes important later on. T-Mobile sued Huawei for $500 million back in 2014, claiming that a cell phone testing machine they developed was stolen by Huawei. In 2017, the courts granted T-Mobile around $4.8 million, a mere fraction of what their ask was. It was settled in court. The issue was done, or so we all thought. But in a country where corporations rule, it's generally not a good idea to piss them off. More on that later. In 2018, the US government essentially blocked a deal between Huawei and AT&T, again citing, quote, security concerns. In this article called Uncle Sam's treatment of Huawei is world-class hypocrisy, consumers will pay the price. The register pointed out the hypocrisy of allowing China to build chips for American companies, but not to sell products in America themselves. As reported at Motherboard, quote, there's no public evidence Huawei spies on Americans, but the company is getting blackballed anyway. And then because of these vague accusations with no evidence, Verizon stopped directly selling Huawei gear. You know, the same Verizon with US military contracts? Huawei publicly described the accusations as groundless and claimed, quote, competitors are using political ways to try and kick us out of the US market. They can't compete with us on the technology and innovation, so they compete with us on the politics. Well, honestly, I'm starting to agree with them here. I mean, what the hell has Huawei done wrong so far? And yet the FCC voted unanimously to ban federal funding for foreign companies that were deemed a threat to the US security. Don't think that was targeting China? Well, the draft of the ban was literally named Huawei and ZTE. The FCC chairman said the US government had been expressing concerns about national security threats from hostile foreign powers like viruses, malware, and stealing Americans' private data, spying on businesses, and more. Which is actually quite mind-blowing when you think about it. I mean, the US government was caught red-handed doing all of those things and much, much more while still no one has presented any evidence that Huawei has done any of it. Are you seeing this? And another thing, Huawei's response to this was, quote, our products and solutions are trusted in more than 170 countries and regions. In 30 years, not a single operator has experienced a security issue with our equipment. This includes US operators. They're still waiting for a reply to that one. So then Australia outright banned Huawei and ZTE because quote, companies that were likely to be subject to extrajudicial directions from a foreign government could present a security risk. In other words, because Huawei is not from a Western country, they're a security risk. And then of course, Japan started considering a ban and Canada started looking into if it should ban Huawei too. Why Japan or any of the other countries aren't considered a security risk was never explained. So after Canada investigated Huawei, their intelligence head said their anti-cyber warfare program is good enough that they should be confident accepting Huawei technology and found no reason for a ban. But oh no, that's not acceptable. The US warned Canada that even though they have an extensive anti-cyber warfare program, they should ban Huawei anyway because their program still won't be enough. I mean, it's like Huawei is somehow by this point the most dangerous company in the world. So how did this shady, scary corporation act when it was challenged? Well, they gave their source code to German security analysts for inspection. 
Hmm, it's strange seeing them act like they have nothing to hide again and again. It's almost like, I don't know, like they have nothing to hide. Did the US back off? No, instead they started pressuring their allies to ban Huawei from 5G networks, and even considered giving money to countries who refused to sign up with Huawei. Again, I ask, why? What is motivating the US to spend so much time and money on blocking Huawei? So by this time, near as I can tell, this is the story. When Huawei started moving towards the West with a superior 5G technology, the West, especially America, started making serious accusations that Huawei was a big, dangerous, spying, hacking company. They then found only evidence to the contrary, but doubled down. And after the US was exposed for having one of the most thorough hacking enterprises ever seen on Earth, which depends on exploiting bugs found in software, they doubled down again. No, it's Huawei that are the bad guys. For some reason, again, no evidence is ever presented or even hinted at. By this point, the public were getting a little uneasy with these accusations. Where is the proof? So what happens next? Another double down, this time crossing the line from political to criminal. The CFO of Huawei, Meng Wanzhou, got arrested suddenly because Huawei violated US sanctions against Iran. Makes sense, case closed. Wait, what? How did this Chinese company violate US sanctions again? You see, most people just read the headlines. Actually, the claim is that Huawei has relationships with US banks, and Huawei has an unofficial subsidiary in Hong Kong that has done business with Iran, and therefore Huawei has violated the law. Um, unofficial subsidiary? If I search for the words unofficial subsidiary, you know what comes up? Only this story. You know why? Because there's no such thing as an unofficial subsidiary. Either it's a subsidiary or it isn't. This is like if you were charged for stealing bread because your unofficial brother stole bread. What's an unofficial brother? Nothing, it's some guy. This is just insane. And speaking of insane, then the German head of the Federal Office of Information Security, who again had access to all of Huawei's code, declared they have found, quote, no evidence of Huawei conducting espionage. Just like the UK did, just like the United States did. So what does the US do? It publicly considers a total ban of all American companies buying Huawei products. Can you imagine a ban where American companies literally can't even buy a Huawei phone? Again, based on what? So then the US government files 23 charges against Meng Wanzhou and Huawei, including for some strange reason, T-Mobile's claim of IP infringement. Didn't the courts already rule that case? Why is it magically coming back years later? So again, what does Huawei do? Does it become secretive and try to hide? No, Huawei publicly states, anyone concerned would be quote, welcome to inspect the firm's laboratories in China. They've offered their source code multiple times invited people to come and check out what they're doing, and they've been more transparent than any Western corporation would do in this situation. That's for sure. I mean, what the hell else can they do? I don't get it. So then the leader of MI6, Alex Lauder, warns against a blanket ban of Huawei. Yeah, good, there's no goddamn evidence. Then in one of the most spot on moments I've ever heard of, Eric Xu from Huawei publicly asks, quote, are they truly considering the cybersecurity and privacy protection of the people in other nations, or are there possibly other motives? Some people argue that they are trying to find leverage for US-China trade negotiations, and some other people argue that if Huawei equipment was used in those countries, US agencies would find it harder to get access to information of those people or find it harder to intercept their mobile communications. Yes, exactly. This guy is exactly correct. I mean, how much clearer can this get? The US is spying its ass off with free reign, and when Huawei comes along, they realize they aren't gonna be able to do it anymore, and they panic. They tell the world that it's Huawei hacking everyone somehow, even though multiple security analyst teams have cleared their software. And then they start arresting people and trying desperately to get other countries to ban Huawei. I'm getting tired of saying this, but I just want you to be super clear on the situation. All of this drama is based on literally no evidence at all, not even the suggestion of evidence. But what about this hint that it might be for the US to use as leverage in trade war? Oh look, Trump signals that he would be discussing the possibility for dropping charges against Huawei as a part of a trade deal. 
I mean, this Eric Xu guy nailed it. Is this guy a psychic or something? No. Him and Huawei have been living this strange anti-Chinese unlawful persecution for years. And all they've tried to do is participate in the global market, fairly and as transparently as possible. I mean, how many damn times do countries have to scour their code again and again only to determine there's no threat before the world wakes up to the reality that the Trump administration is playing a dirty game here? Are we living in a world where it's okay to ban Chinese companies and demonize them without any evidence whatsoever? Now, as a side note, I want to be perfectly clear about my thoughts on government spying. First of all, I think there's a big difference between an optimal paradise and the real world. In paradise, no one would need to spy, I agree. But here on Earth, the fact is that all modern governments have to spy on their people to some degree. If for nothing else, the safety of their citizens. That's just a fact, and unless you're one of those crazy anarchists, there's really no arguing with that. So honestly, I'm not as bent out of shape about America spying as some people are. I think it's pretty normal. I'm sure China spies on its citizens to some degree just like everywhere else. But after all I've seen and learned, the one thing I'm sure of is Huawei is being persecuted unjustly, and in my opinion, their CFO didn't do anything illegal and should be sent back to China. To be honest with you, it feels a little weird defending such a large corporation as Huawei because I'm not really a pro-corporate kind of guy. But it just seems so obvious to me that they haven't done anything wrong, or at the very least, there's not evidence that they've done something wrong, and yet they're being blackballed from every country in the West. It's just crazy. And no, I haven't been asked to do this video by anyone or paid for it in any way. These are my thoughts on the situation. So think about this video the next time you hear some crazy stuff about Huawei. Think about me asking this question. What are the motives? And where's the actual evidence here? Without that, there's nothing but obviously illegitimate accusations. Thanks, everybody. 谢谢。